One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, the 50s zoomed in. The decade was heralded by the invention of the microchip. Diners Club rolled out its first credit card. Life wasn't just fast anymore. It had gone supersonic with the breaking of the sound barrier and the invention of the rocket. And to watch it unfold, television came at last to 220 Cathcart. When after constant badgering from the children, Edward found one at the amazingly low price of $399. This was a major victory for the kids. Barbara and Harry report that Edward's reasonableness was too evident when they were children. They say... We dream up a rock-solid argument for something we wanted, such as the latest record or a bomber jacket or a TV. Dad, we'd say, everyone has one. Our good argument never went anywhere. We'd be met with the reply, if everyone had the chicken pox, would you want that too? But this time they won. Another child, George, was born to Edward and Ellen in 1952. Coincidentally, this was closely followed by the invention of the birth control pill. The city was expanding quickly. The steel plant was booming, and 220 Cathcart was the hive of a busy growing family. Edward, Ellen, and their children attended regular services at St. John's Anglican Church, where Edward served as an elder, taking up the collection, serving up pancakes on Shrove Tuesday, and occasionally giving the sermon on Sunday when the minister was away. Politics were never far from the family tree either, and before long Ellen's father, Walter, was elected mayor of the city. Edward got himself elected to the school board and soon after made a run for a seat on city council. Family dinners were home to lively discussions, charged with stirring oratory and table-thumping, often more closely resembling a rowdy parliament in session than a family meal. One fine summer's day in 1956, Walter Harry, Edward's father-in-law, in his capacity as mayor of the city, was to greet and provide escort to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on her visit to the Sioux. The whole family, proud as peacocks, turned out to witness the event. Edward's five-year-old son, George, perhaps sharing in his father's sense of adventure, took advantage of the family's diverted attention to do a little exploring. He was gone for hours, eventually necessitating a city-wide search. Yes, it seems his three growing children were proving to be just as mischievous as Edward had been. Somewhat earlier, son Harry almost burned down the neighbor's garage, and daughter Barbara drove her boyfriend's motorcycle into a nearby house. So Edward did what any father in his position would do, he began losing his hair. <laughs>